Hey everybody, welcome to the show. I'm Will from Tested. I'm Norm from Tested. This week's show is all about CNC. That stands for Computer Numerical Control. This week we tested out amazing, crazy expensive CNC machines that you can rent out by the hour. All the way down to CNC machines that cost like $200 that you can build at home. And we're gonna build our own home CNC machine, the latest MakerBot. It's the Thingamatic, it's new, it's really exciting, and it's much better than our old cupcake. All the parts are right here. Let's get started. There are four parts of the MakerBot that we'll assemble today. Uh, the first is the chassis. It's just a big wooden box. All the other parts go inside that. The most important thing about the MakerBot is the Plastruder head, which takes plastic in the top, heats it up to 220 degrees Celsius, and then spits it out on the bottom. The build platform is the third stage. It consists of the X, Y, and Z axes, which move back and forth underneath the plastruder as the plastic is spit out. The fourth main component are electronics. Uh, these are the things that take the signals from the computer and turn it into a series of motor movements, temperature controls, and sensor inputs that go back into the computer. But we'll check back in after Norm and I have finished building the X, Y, and Z stage and the automated build platform. Cue the yakety sax like royalty free music. <laughs> Will, that looks nothing like Optimus Prime. No, it does not, but what it does look like is the X and Y stage of a MakerBot. The automated build platform is called that because, you know, previously you had to chisel off the model when it was done, take a putty knife or something, just kind of knock it loose. Uh, with this, there's a conveyor belt on top, and once the model is complete, the conveyor will roll forward, knock the model off, and it just falls out the front of the MakerBot or into a bin or something That's like that. That's what makes this new and hot. And this I have in my hand is actually the Z stage. It's not a mask, kind of looks like a mask. And the plastic extruder sits on top of this and moves it in the vertical Z axis. Real slowly, right? Really slowly, and that builds the uh, the plastic model. That took about two hours to build. What else can you do in two hours, Norm? Well, I also built an egg bot. It's a very easy to build CNC machine. You want to check that out right now. So not everyone has $1,000 or the time or the expertise to build a full-blown MakerBot. But if you want to get into CNC, there's actually a project that only costs $200 and a few hours of your time. It's the EggBot. So what does the EggBot actually do? Well, it's kind of like a computer printer, but instead of drawing on paper, it draws on 3D objects, spherical objects, like eggs. So you take your egg and you put it between these two plungers. That plunger is connected to a stepper motor. In fact, there are two stepper motors in this EggBot. One rotates the egg, and the other controls the pen. Right now, I have a Sharpie attached to the pen arm. They include a Sharpie, but you can really use any other type of marker that fits inside the pen arm. You can use different colors, even a Crayola marker. All the motors are connected to an Arduino board. An Arduino board is an easy programmable interface that connects motors, sensors to a computer. With all the hardware set up, I have the EggBot connected to a power supply and also my computer. So there is some software involved. The software is free, open source, and works on Windows or Mac. It's actually really easy to use. We even took a bitmap of our logo and converted it into a format that the EggBot can read. And here is the result. Looks pretty amazing. It's going to be the best hard-boiled egg I'll ever eat. So once I started printing on eggs, I just couldn't stop. Every egg must have a design on it. Here are some of my favorite prints. I did the very classic Hello World. Look at that fine resolution. I also turned a regular egg into a dragon egg. This one is red. Of course, we have the tested logo. And here's my favorite. It's the world. And if I was allergic to eggs, well, I can print on other things, like ping pong balls, or even a lime. They're not as fine as the egg, because the egg bot actually does require a little bit of calibration, but with some practice, I'm sure they will look perfect. For one final test print, and so you can see this in action, I want to try printing on a tomato. I've actually not tried this before. It could end in tears for the tomato and for me. Still have more. I have really low expectations for this because the tomato is such an irregular shape and you can tell it, the pen actually doesn't make contact with the tomato at all times. But for the most part, it works with some careful calibration. I'm giving a tomato a tattoo. So there you go. That worked out a lot better than I anticipated. I printed on a tomato. You can too with your own egg bot. Go check it out. 
Well, that is a cute little robot, Norm. But do you eat unpainted hard-boiled eggs? Peasant. Anyway, let's get back to building the MakerBot. Uh, next up, you're gonna build the chassis while I build the extruder. Let's go. So next step, the last 25%, electronics. That's where all these wires are gonna connect to. But first, watch our trip to the tech shop. Tech Shop is a makerspace. We give people access to all kinds of different tools. Here in the city, you would need a lot of space to store and run these things. We'll open it up as a membership-based system. My name's Laura, and I'm a dream coach here at Tech Shop San Francisco. So uh, what kind of people are coming to Tech Shop? Is it artists, designers, engineers? All of the above. There are actually people who do their production run of their part that they sell in Ace Hardware out of oh, our cool. injection molders. That's awesome. Yeah. So how do people get access to the machines? You sign up or you come in and you take a class. And you guys offer classes in tons of, like everything from like 3D CAD stuff oh, yeah. to metal work to... It's welding and woodworking and sewing. I mean, it's just goes on and on. We, I mean, we even saw a guy, he's got a, a street map of San Francisco and he's laser cutting every tiny detail of all the dead end alleys and the one way streets, everything. It's, it's amazing. And That's a really good example of something that, you know, even us as staff weren't even sure if that was possible. I think when you give people access to tools, it'll probably push design in a lot more interesting directions. Thanks so much, Laura. Let's go uh, take a look around the shop. Yeah, let's go. So I'm here with Gavin and Zoe, Tech Shop members. What are you guys doing here? We are working on a stool right now, a snap together stool, and we want the, basically the joints to fit perfectly in there, so I think the CNC was the best way to go about it. Start using digital design, okay. usually. Well, we start with a hand sketch and then go to digital design. Okay. And then we try to quickly get it to mill so we can take a look at it and sketch on it. We actually draw on the piece, cut it down, and sculpt it by hand, and then go back and take a look at it again digitally. Each one of these probably took maybe an hour and a half and a little longer for the legs, so maybe two hours for the legs, front and back. So, and, and this is a reductive process, so you take big blocks of wood yeah. and then it routes them away, right? Yeah, we do a lot of laminating, as you can see. <laughs> Are you professional woodworkers? Uh, we're both trained architects, oh. and back in the days when people used to work in wood shops all the time and build models, so that's how we started. Very cool, thanks guys. Thank you yeah, very much. Thank you. All right, I'm here with Terry of Tech Shop, and we're in front of the Tormach. What is the Tormach? The Tormach is a personal CNC machine. It's used to cut anything from machinist wax. You can do steel, aluminum. What members will use this for is they will go through uh, designing whatever they want on uh, the inventor software upstairs. They'll take that through a cam package that we have, come down here, literally plug the G code in, which is a, a text-based vector code. So it'll say, go to XYZ, go to XYZ, go to XYZ. You take that aluminum block, right up to the injection molder, put it in, hit go, and you get your injection molded parts out. It cuts metal. <laughs> Check this out. It looks like a more professional version of our maker. Well, that's because that's what this basically is. It's the BFB 3000. It stands for bit for byte. And like our MakerBot, it prints ABS plastic. It'll also print water-soluble plastic so you can build really complex objects like gears, little bicycles. Super cool. So now we're in front of the Epilogue laser. It's a CNC laser cutting machine. And what does it cut? Well, we cut paper, cardboard, wood, leather, felt, even acrylic. Actually, let's test it out. You see the laser in the corner, and you basically put any material inside, flat material, and with computer, you can calibrate uh, how deep you want to etch, whether you want to cut all the way through, and even how the burn uh, is around your stencil. That is pretty awesome. Look, it's printing testicles, the logo for testicles.com. Tech shop, pretty cool. There are co-ops like that in cities all around the country, Norm. You know what's even cooler? Finishing this MakerBot. But the last step, the electronics. That means attaching Arduino boards to the motherboard.
the thingamatic is complete. All it's waiting for is its ceremonial first lick. What does that taste like, Norm? Splintery. Gross. I kissed the robot and I liked it. Yeah. And with the ceremonial first lick behind us, it's time to retire the old Cupcake CNC. <sighs> We've had so many good memories with that. We've had it for over a year. Yeah. This amount of nostalgia can only be done justice with montage. montage. Right now, we're going to print our first something awesome. So uh, stay tuned. We're going to do a time lapse. It's going to take 40 or 45 minutes. And we're not going to tell you what it is until you watch the video. So, uh, so stick around. It looks like a skull, right? Yeah. Doesn't work. It's a rubber band powered flight thing. Well, that was underwhelming. Let's try again. Oh, I thought that the MakerBot wasn't loud and obnoxious enough in the old area, so we're, we're moving out where everybody can enjoy it. So uh, stay tuned, let's see what comes out of the machine this week. Throwing star, zipper pull, little android guy. This is a 3D spiral graph. Pac-Man ghost. I'm not a wizard, but that looks up. Egg cup holder with bunny feet. This is worse than regular chopsticks. It's a flying spaghetti monster. This is a Darth Vader head. Pencil? Little pencil hat. Oh, hello. I didn't see you there. Good times, fond memories, but all good things must come to an end. So goodbye, old MakerBot. Hello, new MakerBot. And while you were watching that lovely montage tending the classic Cupcake CNC out with style, we printed our first thingamatic object. a really, really creepy Colbert head stuck on a bunny. That doesn't leave you with enough nightmares. We will be printing more mystery objects on the Thingamatic, so check in every Friday for that. So Norm, what did we learn this week? Well, we learned that CNC, Computer Numerical Control, is not as scary or complex as its crazy name implies. Yeah, even though the idea of turning bits into physical objects seems like it's from the near future, it's actually surprisingly attainable. We did it with the MakerBot, which this year was so much easier to build and operate than last year's mark. And if you don't want to spend $1,300 on a MakerBot, you can get in the CNC with the EggBot. It's just $200, anyone can do it. And when you take the skills that you learn with the EggBot and the MakerBot and apply them to real products or things that you want to sell to people, you can do that at places like Tech Shop. They're popping up all over America and you can get access to high-end CNC machines. Yeah, we love Tech Shop with some souvenirs. Well, oh, good, actually. Uh, I have a tested logo printed on cardboard with a laser. Wow, I got us. Look, it's us. Oh, cool. Smell I'm having Smell that awesome vaporized cardboard. I had a lot of fun this week. We have a lot of fun every day on Tested.com, Norm. That's where you'll find more stories about CNC. And all sorts of other technology like smartphones and tablets and laptops. So until next time, I'm Will. I'm Norm. Always be testing.